Ruben Amarim is set to take charge of his first Manchester United game on Sunday, and with his bold 3-4-3 system, fans are buzzing with anticipation. But here's the big question. Can his radical tactics transform a team struggling in 13th place into a top four contender? And how will he overcome a squad that's never played like this before? Stick around to find out why this might just be United's year zero moment. Ruben Amarim arrives at Old Trafford with Manchester United in an unfamiliar position 13th in the Premier League table. However, the gap to the top four is only four points, meaning the season isn't beyond salvage. Amarim's task is clear. Steady the ship while laying the foundation for his long-term vision. Amarim is essentially playing with house money this season. Everything from Ineos suggests that this is more year zero than year one, and the same would likely be applied for Amarim. His job will be to come in and use the remaining part of the season to start imposing his vision and identity onto the club. Though these comparisons can get annoying, the situation isn't too dissimilar from the situation Jurgen Klopp found himself in when he took over a 10th place Liverpool side in October of 2015, who were just three points off the top four. Everyone remembers Klopp leading Liverpool to an 8th place finish, which was okay because the priority was embedding his philosophy. What people often don't remember is Liverpool went to the final of both the League Cup and Europa League that season. So, while they weren't competitive in the league, they still maintained a competitive season. United still has everything to play for in three competitions, and Amorim's first interview with MUTV suggests he's aware that United will need to be competitive right away. Amorim does find himself in a bit of a unique situation. Most managers who take over clubs in the middle of the season and find immediate success tend to follow the same recipe. They first implement a new structure to shore up the defense and becomes very difficult to break down. When they stop leaking goals, results tend to follow. Amorim is taking over a side that already did this. United have gone from a club that was conceding 17.34 shots per game last season to just 11.0 this year, fourth best in the league. They've conceded just seven goals from open play tied for the second fewest in the league. Where United need to improve is their attack, which ranks 17th in open play goals. That's explained by their 13.9 shots per game, which ranks 9th in the league while their 1.51 non-penalty XG is 7th. In other words, they don't create enough chances to consistently score goals. Amarim is going to need to increase the attacking output without sacrificing that defensive solidity. At his final press conference with Sporting, Amarim hinted that he'd be utilizing the 3-4-3 system he used at Sporting right from the jump at Old Trafford. No, I, I know I, how I, I am going to play in the beginning because um, you have to start with a structure, a structure that, that you know, and then you will adapt um, with the players that you have, some injuries or no injuries what kind of players, um, the, the abilities to defend, to attack, I will discover that um, in the next few weeks. We don't have a lot of time to, to train, so I have to, to, to show something that I know very well. The biggest unknown right now is, of course, how capable will United's current squad be of playing this formation. This is something radically different to what United have been doing. Amarim's 3-4-3 relies on central progression. Take a look at the common starting 11 for Amarim's sporting side this season, along with the team's leaders in progressive passes. If we take a look at who received the most progressive passes, we can easily get a picture of how things worked. The outside center backs either went direct to the two playmakers up top, or went out wide to the wing backs who pushed high up the pitch. The wing backs would work the ball back to the middle where the central midfielders would push the ball up to the attackers. Formation aside, this is drastically different from how United have been playing, where their build-up has been focused on the outside. Take any random pass map from any of United's matches this season, and there's a noticeable part of the pitch that has a dearth of passes. Other than Bruno Fernandes, United doesn't have anyone who progresses the ball at the volume the sporting players do. Lissandro Martinez's 5-8-2 progressive passes per 90 while playing centre-back is a career-best during his time in England. Matthijs de Ligt made 636 progressive passes per 90 in the Bundesliga last year, but that was the Bundesliga. This season he's making just 1.76. Harry Maguire's career best 660 came in 2018-19, six seasons ago. This is the obvious caveat. Those sporting players are simply not facing Premier League opponents. According to Opta, just five Portuguese league teams are of Premier League quality. If they were playing Premier League sides, we would not expect those numbers to be as high as they are. The examples of De Ligt and Martinez, whose lowest season at Ajax was 8.42 PRG passes per 90, show us the kind of drop-offs we can anticipate. 
nutshell, this will be the biggest challenge for Ruben Amorim. How will his style scale to the Premier League, where the quality of play is much higher as is the quality of the coaches? Teams figure you out exceptionally quickly in the Premier League. If you're not always adapting, you're not going to be long for this league. Out of possession, Amorim has his team press high up the pitch and constantly run. Whether or not United's players are capable of doing that is one thing, but Amorim is joining a league where high pressing has been on the decline in the early parts of this season. We don't have any certain reasons for this trend, but here are two theories. As the workload continues to increase and stoppage time rules have made matches even longer, coaches have decided it's not a sustainable strategy to frantically press over a full 90 minutes. A more simpler theory would say that after years of nearly everyone in the league pressing everyone, is now far more comfortable playing through and breaking a press. The advantage that pressing a team's backline once gave you doesn't exist anymore. One of Amorim's biggest strengths is figuring things out. He may not shift from his 3-4-3 formation, but uses different players to play different styles all from within that formation. His focus isn't so much on playing a specific way, as much as it is on figuring out how to utilize his players' skill sets to the benefit of the team all from within this system. The base formation may be a 3-4-3, but rotations can be tinkered to utilize the strengths of specific players. On the one hand, one advantage that Amorim has is most teams in the league don't play with a back three. That means Amorim is bringing something different, and when you bring something different, you always have the chance of catching a nice run of results as you initially catch teams off guard, similar to Ange Postacoglu's start last season at Tottenham. However, eventually, teams will adapt to you and that will be the true test of whether Amorim will sink or swim. On the other hand, there were some Premier League clubs that used to play with a back three and they don't anymore. Is that because everyone is slowly moving to all playing the same way? Or because teams have already figured them out and Amarim is walking into a bit of an ambush? For United fans, this is new territory. The club has rarely played with a back three save for a very forgetful period during the Louis van Gaal era and occasionally in 2019-20 in some of the bigger games, but even that was mostly injury forced. It may seem counterintuitive to be adding a defensive player to the 11 when the team needs to add creativity and potency to the attack, but perhaps streamlining things will improve the productivity elsewhere. Amarim knows that more often than not, United are going to need to take the game to their opponents. He will come up with ideas as to how to do this. Short-term Amarim isn't going to be judged on his league position or whether he wins a trophy this season. But keeping United at least competitive, especially in the Cups, is imperative. His biggest challenge on that end will be finding shots in a team that, save for Alejandro Garnacho, just doesn't have many in them. To do that, he's going to need to maximize the pieces he has at his disposal. How is he going to do that, and where does everyone fit? Now it's your turn. What do you think about Amarim's tactics? Can this season be salvaged, or should we view this as a foundation for the future? Let me know in the comments! And if you're as excited as we are for this new era, smash that like button, subscribe to the channel, and hit the bell icon so you don't miss any updates. Let's build a community of passionate Reds right here. See you in the next video!